10 tips on how to pack better for travel right now. I'm Tom, the founder of Pack Hacker, and we love helping people optimize their travel experience with reviews, guides, and video content just like this. So if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. I've even spent two years living out of one singular 40 liter backpack, so I definitely have a lot of experience in this arena. Let's jump into the video. Before we get going, I wanna mention that this video is sponsored by onlywhatmatters.com, an online community for aspiring minimalists. Mac, the founder, is all about teaching folks to live better with less stuff. He's big on closet audits, which enable you to declutter your wardrobe and add more simplicity to your everyday life. Feel free to join me in the community. I've got a link in the description below. Let's get into tip number one. One of the best ways to decide what you wanna take with you on a trip and what you wanna leave at home is to just lay everything out in front of you, either on the table or even the floor, maybe even your bed. With this, you have a big picture view on what you wanna take with you, what you can leave behind, and maybe what you need a little bit more of. So when you have it all laid out, it's a lot easier to see all that and notice the patterns that you have going on in your selections. Pro tip, look at everything in front of you and try to cut it in half. Just take out one item after item after item and pretty soon you'll notice that you make it a lot more minimal. Last thing you wanna do is to have an overweight pack and be that person in the airport rummaging through everything, trying to save space to either fit your bag in as a carry-on or trying to take even more things out so that you can properly check your bag based on the airline regulation. With everything in front of you, it becomes easier to pick an organization style that's gonna work for you. So here are a couple that have worked for us. First, frequency of use. Something that you use very often, say your phone, makes sense to have that in a quick access pocket on your bag or luggage, maybe even your pocket or like a fanny pack or a sling. You don't wanna have that thing you know, in your bag in a packing cube in another pouch. It just doesn't make sense. So really think through your items. If there's a jacket, it's gonna be warm for the most part. The second leg of your trip is maybe a little bit cooler. Put that jacket way at the bottom of your bag, stuff it out of the way, out of sight, out of mind. Leaves a lot more room for things that you want quicker access to. Secondly, you can sort by item type. It's good to keep like products with one another. So if you keep your socks with your underwear, it just makes sense. You keep your long sleeve shirt with your sweatshirt, with your jacket, keep that warm stuff compartmentalized in itself maybe even a scarf or some gloves in there too. That'll help you think through the organization if you think in themes of item types. And next, outfit packages. Consider putting items that are used in conjunction together with each other. For instance, if you're heading to a nicer dinner, maybe there's a separate cube or compartment where you keep all your nicer clothing. Whereas if you're going to the gym, there's a spot in your pack for all that as well. This is kind of like the item-based approach. However, it's different in the fact that it's contextual. So it's more about the activity that you're going to be doing with that gear versus holding like things with one another. So again, those are three ways that have worked for us on how to organize things. Your mileage may vary. Compartmentalize your gear. Think about storing everything in your bag within packing cubes or pouches. That keeps things a lot more organized overall. Even a plastic grocery bag or a Ziploc bag can work wonders if you have it laying around your house. You don't even have to buy anything new. This helps with the previous tip and keeps things neat and very easy to access. We recommend strong and lightweight packing cubes, especially if there is compression technology. Packing cubes and pouches come in many different sizes and allow you to cater specific items to put inside. Grab a smaller packing cube for socks and underwear, a larger cube for pants, jackets, and sweaters, or medium-sized cubes to compartmentalize complete outfits. We've typically found that rolling clothing saves the most space within a cube, and the cube can take care of the rest and really hold its shape and make it a lot easier to pack and organize in your bag. It's kind of like Tetris, it's fun. Small pouches are also good for organizing your tech gear, your toiletries, and any small medicines or small things that you need to carry with you when you're on the road. For a quick pro tip, use packing cubes and organizers of different colors. This will help you create mental models in your head so you know where things are within your pack just by remembering those couple of colors in your head. Consider multi-functional items. Take an inventory of what you packed and really look for things that can serve multiple purposes. For instance, a coat, especially a lighter weight compressible one, can double as a pillow when you're on the road if you're in a pinch. Take inventory of your cables. The less you bring with you overall, the better it's gonna be. So look for small, tiny little conversion pieces. For instance, if you have a small USB-C to USB-A 
adapter. It's a lot better than taking two giant cords with you. Better to pack lighter weight overall. If you're a photographer, consider bringing zoom lenses instead of lenses with a fixed focal length, and that's gonna save a lot of space and add versatility, especially if you're trying to travel lightweight and minimally. Also, pick up a buff. It's one of our favorite lightweight and multifunctional items that you can bring with you on the road. You can use it as a scarf like I have here. You can also use it as a hat. You take this, you twist it, you fold it over itself, and boom, you've got a little skull cap. Look at that. I'm not gonna put it on because it's gonna ruin my amazing hair. Also, you can use it as a face mask to block the light if you wanna take a nap. So, I'm just gonna... And then you do not have to have a dedicated sleeping mask, and that's a plus, two for one. Pro tip, despite all the paring down and minimizing, sometimes it's good to have some redundancy if an item or a piece of clothing is really important to you. And that's a very personal choice, but if you're in more of a remote area and it's for a long duration, you might wanna think about that a little bit more. If you're in a city center where you have easy access to things, that's not as big of a deal. Get some merino wool. It is the optimal clothing for travel. I personally wear it every day. So my buff right here is wool, my shirt is wool, my socks are wool, my underwear is wool as well. So I definitely love it and I've integrated it into my everyday life even when I'm not traveling. It's nature's magic fabric, soft, comfortable, and antimicrobial, which means it doesn't stink as much when you're on the road. Plus, when you bring a merino tee instead of a couple cotton tees, you can save space and weight in your pack and potentially avoid overages in your baggage fees if you have to check bags or carry them on and they weigh too much. When I was on the road for two years, I had one merino wool button up and four merino wool t-shirts, four pairs of merino wool boxers, and four pairs of merino socks. If I was going to do this again, I would probably cut that in half. With two of everything, it is simple to wear one thing and wash another and leave it to dry while you're out for the day from your hostel, hotel, Airbnb, whatever. You can wear Merino many days before it requires a wash, especially if it's from a quality brand. And from a cost per wear perspective, if it's from a quality brand, it can be up there as well because Merino is a tad expensive, but it's justifiable if you wanna carry less, wear things for longer between washes. And seriously, we love this stuff. That's why we created an entire guide on Marina Wool over at packhacker.com. Should be sure to check that out as well. Pro tip, nobody cares if you're wearing the same thing day after day, especially when you're traveling. And even if they do notice, it's likely that they won't care as long as you don't smell super bad. And that's what's great about Merino. It stays fresh for a lot longer. Keep everything fresh. Between long flights and unplanned adventures, there's gonna be times where you're not gonna be able to shower and you're gonna be a little bit grimier than usual. And Merino wool will definitely help out with that. We also like to have like pack fresheners within our bags and our luggage. Although there are a ton of recommendations out there to carry along dryer sheets, we've personally found that wooden cedar chips are the best option for us, especially if you like that scent. The smell will last longer than the dryer sheet while you're on the road. Also, we just prefer the scent of something natural instead of something super synthetic. Some people also like to carry essential oils with them, lavender oil, or potpourri sachets as well. And that's totally fine. Your mileage may vary based on the scents that you prefer. When you're on the road, your bag and your luggage is pretty much your constant in your life. It's basically your home, so why not try to keep that fresh? And one pro tip with these cedar chips, it's a natural deterrent for bugs and critters that like to get into your bag and chomp away at your clothes and things like that, especially merino wool. So if you keep the cedar in there, it can help deter those little critters from chomping away at your stuff. Get some solid soap. So we have covered on how to keep your bag fresh. Well, how about keeping yourself fresh when you're on the road? Shampoo bars can do wonders. They have a small form factor so they don't take up too much space. They're highly concentrated and they typically last quite a long time. They are multi-use when you're on the road, so use it for shampoo, soaking your body. You can even use it for washing dishes or laundry if you're in a pinch, depending on the soap that you choose. And the best part, they're a solid, which means it's easy to get through TSA's liquid allowance in airports around the world. Concentrated liquid Castile soap also works really well, say something like Dr. Browner's However, that counts against your liquid allowance. And when you're going through TSA, you're getting on an airplane, some of the pressure changes, 
And there's always, even if you're just walking around like your neighborhood, there's always a chance that whatever tube or thing that you have that liquid soap in can bust open and spill around the contents of what's in your luggage or your bag. Even if you're going on a short weekend trip, we'd still recommend bringing a shampoo bar or liquid soap along with you. It doesn't take up a lot of space and you'll be glad to have it when you need it, especially if you're on some unexpected delays. Pro tip, a more fragrant shampoo bar can also do a great job at keeping your pack fresh in addition or in place of those cedar chips that we talked about in the last tip. Bring a compact bag. If you're going one bag traveling either with a backpack or some luggage, it's good to have a smaller packable compressible bag you can keep with you and use with you as you get to your destination. So whether it's a packable day pack, a tote bag, or a reusable grocery bag, or maybe even one of those bags that you see at Lululemon, for instance, where they give you the super fancy bag with whatever it is that you're buying, and then you've got like 50 of them at home and you don't know what to do with them, well, just bring one on your trip and then use it as you're out and about. If you're cafe hopping and doing the digital nomad thing, maybe you have a packable day pack you can use with a padded laptop sleeve to hold your tech gear, keyboard, mouse, laptop, things that you need at the coffee shop to work for the day. If you're out for a hike or exploring the city, maybe bring your phone, a battery pack for charging, a map, some snacks, and a water. It's great to have that stuff with you and all the essentials with you when you don't have to carry around your giant luggage or your massive one bag travel backpack. Pro tip, we have all been there. We wanna take home some souvenirs for our friends and our family, but our luggage is full. Well, if you have a packable pack, you can just take that out, unravel it, whatever, put your souvenirs in there and use that as your personal item when you're flying home, depending on your airline. And then boom, you don't have to check a bag, you don't have to ship anything, and then you're just good to go. Friends and family will just be thrilled. They'll love it. Plan your flight. Having all items close to you on the trip is an underrated perk. If you're using a packing cube and a pouch method inside of your bag, consider making those packing cubes a sling or some type of fanny pack instead. Slings come in many different sizes and they're perfect for the road because they can hold just about the right amount of stuff that you want to carry with you on a small excursion. It's basically a fanny pack with a larger strap that you can wear messenger style. Some examples of what you can bring along as your essentials in flight are the following ideas. Water drinks and snacks, an eye mask and earplugs to help you sleep, USB cable, headphones, your phone, and a cord to plug into the seat monitor in front of you for charging. A notepad and pen for any wild ideas that come to you in the air, plus you like having that pen when it comes time to fill out the customs forms before you arrive at your destination if you are going to a different country rather than your own. Get creative, you can definitely put a lot of stuff in here. I personally like putting everything that are in my pockets inside of the sling. That way when I get to the airport checkpoint, go through security, instead of emptying your pockets, taking everything off, you just already have it in your sling, pop that through security and you are good to go. Strategize to save money. A little bit of planning will help you save some cash while you're on the road. Starting with food. Eating on the road, especially in transit, is usually inconvenient, unhealthy, and expensive. On a plane trip, you need to wait for specific times to eat. And if it's a short enough flight, you may not even be able to eat at all. Always good to prepare and bring some snacks along with you. For optimal packing, we recommend high calorie, high density, and low weight, non-perishable foods. You'll get the most bang for your buck this way and generally the space and weight to usage ratio is great. For example, nuts, trail mix, and protein bars seem to do really well on the road. Next up, being prepared with electronic cords, international converters, SIM cards, and cables is great. Oftentimes products sold at airports or more generally touristy areas are overly expensive and cheaply made. Take some time to think through your needs on the road, your wallet will thank you. Consider loading up your bandwidth hungry content at home locally on your devices before you leave for your trips, whether it's an ebook on your Kindle or your iPad or video content, movies, TV shows, etc. Load all that up at home. In flight and at a hotel, speeds can be quite low. In the worst case scenario, you'll be charged for either megabytes or gigabytes of bandwidth that you've used. Not to mention international phone plans or temporary data plans with SIM cards that have a bandwidth cap. There are a ton of different ways to plan and save money. These are just three examples. And for a quick pro tip, make sure to bring your own empty water bottle through TSA security checkpoint, fill it up with water after you get through, and that's gonna save you at least three bucks every trip. 
practice your trip. We often get asked what the best travel backpack is or what the best travel gear is and we love and we're honored to be experts in this space. However, at the end of the day, it's all about you, your travel style and what uniquely fits into your lifestyle. With all this, the best advice we can give is to practice your trip beforehand. Load everything up into your bag a week before you leave. Take it to work with you. Only use the gear that's inside for an entire week or two, maybe even a month. At the end of the week, take a look back at what you used a lot, what you didn't use. Cut things out, add things in, iterate and test. Coming from me, a person that's lived out of a backpack for nearly two years, try to cut some of the clutter out of your life. You'll definitely thank yourself for it. Pro tip, be mindful of what you buy. You probably don't need to go out and buy that shiny new thing every couple of months. Starting with what you have and slowly upgrading with high quality items that have high durability and last a long time is one of the best ways to go about things. Thanks for checking this out. We would love to know your favorite travel tips in the comments below. Be sure to head over to onlywhatmatters.com and join me for advice and conversation on how to simplify not only your packing and travel style, but simplifying other aspects of your life as well. Thanks for taking a look at this video. We'll see you in the next one. The, you, or medium sized cubes to compartmentalize. <laughs> Before we get going, I want to mention that this is video. <laughs>